Good day, and welcome back to the channel. Now we've talked about some pretty good sized machinery, as well as some smaller stuff, but today might take the cake on the smallest tractor. Today, we're talking about the John Deere Model H. We're going to be covering what prompted John Deere to go ahead and build this, as well as covering some prototypes of it and what it could have turned out to be. But before we get going, if you like tractor research and history videos, go ahead and hit subscribe, because we got a bunch more coming your way. Anyways, let's go. The John Deere Model B was introduced in 1935. Now this would be John Deere's smallest row crop tractor and would be a popular alternative for the smaller farmer as opposed to the A's, B's, and G's. So let's take a look now at some of the prototypes of this tractor. The experiment that was to become the Model H was titled the OX. This OX's development period would be at the time when John Deere was still building unstyled tractors. And naturally, you wouldn't see much sheet metal, you'd see an exposed radiator and steering pedestal. One thing about this steering pedestal is you can see it's tipped at more of an angle than you'd find on your A's and B's. Other notable changes you'd see on the OX was the rims, the seat, and slanted gauges. Many of these OX's were built from spare John Deere Model B parts. John Deere would continue to work on these prototypes from the mid to late 1930s. Some of the things that drove development for this tractor was that it was smaller and lighter than the Model B. For some of these experimental tractors, the crankshaft would be cast alloy, but John Deere would change that and go back to the forged steel crankshaft. By the end of the 1930s, John Deere was looking to update their tractor line, and that's when you'd see the tractors become styled in 1939. This would also be the same year you'd see the release of the Model H. We'd end up seeing four different variations and options for this tractor. The main one and most produced was the Model H row crop. Following that up, we'd see 978 of the HNs produced. Now the HN is a narrow single front wheel. This setup would excel on vegetable farms with narrow row spacings. Next up, we have the HWH. There'd be 133 of these produced, and this would be a high crop with a wide front end. And the last main variant would be the HNH. This would be a high crop with a narrow single front wheel. With 31 of those produced, it would make it the most rare option. But it's said that there's also some short axle variants out there that are even more rare, but no one has an exact figure. In total, there'd be 58,584 Model H tractors produced. These would roll off the line in Waterloo, Iowa with a familiar two-cylinder gas engine that would pump out roughly 15 horsepower. It would feature two pistons at 3.56 by 5 inch strokes and have a rated RPM of 1400. This would be the smallest two-cylinder horizontal engine Deere would ever use. For the transmission, you'd see a much simplified version of what the A's and B's had, where you'd have three forward gears and one reverse. This is where you'd see something very unique to the Model H. Where the A's and B's would power up the transmission off the crankshaft, the Model H would be powered from the camshaft. For those who don't know, the camshaft is what controls your push rods that open and close your intake and exhaust valves. On the Model H, the clutch would be bolted up to the camshaft. This is why when you look at a Model H, you can see that the clutch is sitting back and a little bit higher than it is on other two cylinders. It also spins in reverse direction. By running it off the camshaft, this would slow down the speed of the transmission. With a slower speed, it allowed John Deere to eliminate the two bull gears found commonly in two-cylinder tractors. With a top speed of only 5.8 miles an hour, this wouldn't be the tractor for you if you were in a hurry. The Model H would also have the option to be equipped with the John Deere Power Lift. The Power Lift is a hydraulic pump and valve that bolts on and runs off the governor housing. The valve part of this power lift would be called the duplex control valve. It would be fairly simple to operate with only two levers. To lower a hydraulic cylinder, you'd push the power lift lever down as well as the duplex lever. And to raise it, it'd be the same operation, just backwards. Now this would only be an option on the Model H and wouldn't be on from the factory. John Deere would continue to improve this Model H design and release it to the public in 1941. And it was in January of that year you'd see lights and electric starter mounted to the Model H. To make this possible, John Deere would have to add a battery and a generator. The battery would be located in between the frame in front of the valve cover. This would differ from the Model A's at the time that were mounting the battery under the dash. In case of a dead battery or a starter failure, you'd still be able to start this machine. With the exposed flywheel, John Deere would supply a cranking shaft. 
Another option you'd see offered for these Model H was a platform extension. These would be put on to protect the operator from debris flying up, but are very seldom seen today. As the 40s would wear on, you'd see an emphasis for bigger tractors and bigger farms, and the Model H would see its run on the production line finished in 1947. It would also be in this year you'd see updates to other John Deere's, including the A getting a press frame and a battery box with a new seat on top. Something about the H that makes it identifiable from a distance besides its small size is its unique front rims. These would be fully cast rims, and although John Deere would change the rear rims from the prototype to the production, they'd run these on the H and set it apart from the other row crops available. The final asking price for the Model H in 1947 was $650. Looking at inflation, this $650 tractor would come up to just over $9,000 in 2023. It is also interesting to look at the price of the John Deere A at the time, which was selling for around $2,000. The Model H isn't one of the most popular or sought after tractors, but is definitely a cool part in the John Deere two cylinder story. This tractor achieved its goal at having an economical price as well as being smaller and lighter. So I'm curious, what's your experience with the John Deere Model H? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways guys, that's going to do it for today's tractor research and history. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.